Hi guys, so this is just going to be a quick video on how to update the firmware on your Fairtech G3 Ultra handheld gimbal. Uh, fairly straightforward, very similar to their other gimbals that they've done, but it does trip a few people up sometimes, so I thought I'd do a video, it might be helpful for people to understand. Uh, the thing is you're going to need, obviously you're going to need the gimbal, you're going to need some batteries in it. Uh, make sure your GoPro is attached to it so you don't cause issues with the balance. Uh, the next thing that you're going to need is your USB cable, which would have come with the um, come with the gimbal itself. And we're going to need to do a bit of downloading as well. So get yourself over to Fairtech's website. Uh, go to their products page. So we're in Home Products and the Steady Gimbal and ARHS, and head yourself to the GY. Uh, the FYG3 Ultra 3-axis handheld gimbal page. Okay, so once you're here, we're going to go to the download tab. Okay, and the things we need to be careful with. We are looking for 3-axis. We're not looking for 2-axis. Now, that can trip a few people up. I've seen it on YouTube so far that people have had that problem. Um, so the first thing that you want to do, download the Fayatech new USB driver. That will be the first one. Uh, so get that downloaded. They come in as raw files, so you're going to need something to unzip them. Um, ideally, I use personally the free version of WinRAW. That works fine. Um, so anyway, download that and, um, and extract it to a place that you can find. Next, you're going to need the firmware. This is version 1.3, uh, 1.03, sorry, uh, which is July 2014. Um, and once you've done that, we're also going to need the FYG3 gimbal update software and manual for 3-axis. Again, 3-axis. That was also in July. So download all three of those and extract them. And here we are right here so I've extracted all of these and I've just popped them into a FYG3 folder um, so we've got the USB drivers here we've got the gimbal software which is here and we've got the actual firmware which is just a bin file here okay so first and foremost you're going to want to install the USB driver so we go into this it's a Windows now if you've got a 64-bit computer then you're going to need the 64-bit version. If you've got a 32-bit, you're going to need the 32-bit version. How do you know which one's which? You go to your Start button, you right-hand click on Computer, Properties, in here, Type of System, 64-bit Operating System. Thank you very much, we want 64-bit. OK, so now let's open the 64-bit version. Click Next. We accept the agreement. Next. OK, ready to use. Now, note that you should not have it plugged in at this point. Uh, probably should have said that already, um, but don't have your USB plugged in until you've installed the uh, the actual software. It doesn't make a major difference. I've tried it actually myself, just in case. Uh, it won't cause problems, but if you do have it installed already, it might cause a bit of an installation issue, so try not to. Click Finish on that. So that's now actually installed. Now we can test that out. So grab your USB stick and plug it in. As you can see down the bottom here, we've got installing device driver ready to use. Now, make a little note here, COM7. This is the COM port that the USB device is using, and we're going to need that later on. Um, if you don't click on the, uh, the little bubble when it's installing, it's not a problem. You can also find that out by going to... I actually start button, made space so control I panel. transport the whole plane with the tail device attached. Manager. Uh, it was just too unwieldy. And it was massive. Uh, I can barely ports. fit it in the Subaru. It was getting on my nerves. So I thought, that. well, I'll give I've this a communication call. So what I'll do is I'll just cut one right now and, and we'll move and over and see how it all goes CK in the case now. USB port com down. 7. So again, just take note of that. Okay, so now we've got the USB installed. Um, what we want to do is we want to load up the software first and foremost. So again, make sure at this point in time your gimbal is not powered on and it's not plugged in. We don't want any of that just yet. So we head off to the update software, double click on it, that will open here and you can see this is where we need the COM port. So at the moment we want COM7, we don't want COM1 because we know it's plugged into COM7. Um, so this is with the USB plugged in, it's identified it as COM7 and then we just click open. So again we've not even plugged in the gimbal yet so we've opened that port up, basically that's opening a communications port to it. Leave this little drop down here, no problems with that. And then we click open file. And now what we want from this file, let me just navigate back so you can see, 
again this is the actual firmware so we want the firmware we've just downloaded version 1.03 for me and double click on that okay so at this point it will now tell you that this is what it's going to load up so if we clicked update right now nothing's going to happen because we haven't got anything plugged in so next thing without turning the gimbal on and make sure that's a point without turning the gimbal on just yet now plug in your USB to the front of the gimbal you will see that the blue light's going to come on at this point don't worry too much about that it's not going to do anything however now what I'm going to do is I'm going to press the button on the bottom of the gimbal to turn it on and boom as soon as I do that as you can see link OK that's telling us that it's communicating with the gimbal and it's telling us the current firmware version on this gimbal so this is now telling us that we're all set to do the update and all we need to do now is click update and as you can see here it will do its usual sending of blocks it normally does a couple goes to 100 and then goes to something else another 100 I think or 70 but we just sit and wait for that to happen you will see on the gimbal itself that on the motor lights they're all flashing blue and actually the um, the button light is as well so it goes it goes to the next one sending blocks And a third one. Now, what this will be is it will be one block for each motor, almost certainly. Okay, and send OK. That tells us that the firmware has sent to the device OK. So we can now close the port. If we wanted to make sure that the uh, the firmware has actually updated properly, then all we'd have to do is click on open the port. And we could actually open the file. We're going to turn the gimbal off. Turn it back on again. There you go. Link OK. Version 1.03 is installed. We don't want to do anything with that. So turn the gimbal off again close the port, close the device and then unplug the USB from the front of it power on your gimbal and make sure it's all working and it's as easy as that so if you've got any questions by all means leave a comment but um, hopefully that will be a bit helpful to a few people just to see how you can update it that update process applies across pretty much all the range of the gimbal so the aero version the USB version um, the, the handheld version sorry so, uh, so yeah hopefully that's of help